Hello again, everyone. We wanted to take just a couple of minutes and bring you up to speed on what we're doing at Aegis Financial and certainly what's been going on and what have been some very volatile markets and some great opportunities for investors. But we hit another really important milestone this week on the S&P 500. That's right. The S&P 500 exceeded 3,900 this week, which is almost 70% higher than the low of the COVID crisis last just almost a year ago. Hey, think back and everything that's happened in the U.S. economy and the world since then. And the S&P 500 was at 2,300 back then, 3,900 now. I think that's difficult for some people to understand how the economy can be so bad, but the markets have been so good. Sure. Well, we viewed the COVID crisis as a health crisis that led to an economic crisis. We were convinced that the market would recover, but we didn't think it would recover as fast as it did. One thing that was very interesting during this last year is for the first time in my career, we had more people wanting to get in the market than get out of the market. And I think we're starting to see that continue. You, you see things like reopening and you know people going back to school and going back to work and, and more bars and restaurants opening again. It just kind of gives you a sense that maybe we're getting back to normal. Sure. And I think people are starting to think that maybe the economy is coming back to normal and then the stock markets will follow. That's right. We seem to track the COVID crisis, uh, new cases, and there has been a big drop off in the last few months of new cases and deaths due to COVID. And of course, you've got vaccines. We had Johnson & Johnson with the single dose vaccine mm -hmm. that's being introduced now as well. So more people are going to get vaccinated, hopefully. And as that continues to happen, it starts to give you that feel-good feeling about what can happen in the U.S. economy. That's right. And it leads to something else, which I think has really been interesting. When you look at retail sales numbers, for instance, 5.3% increase, way higher than estimated. And it's, I think it's a little bit of that pent-up demand from people who have been in their houses for the last year. Yeah, yeah I think people want to get out and, and get things done, start to travel again and buy things again that they're used to getting. Um, for the majority of our clients that we've been meeting with, a lot of them are saving excess money. In fact, they're contacting us to say, don't send me any more because I, I haven't spent it this last year. <laughs> yeah. That's a great problem to have. You know, turn your attention a little bit to interest rates because we saw a little bit of that last week. We saw the 10-year U.S. bond pop up a little bit and you start to see a little bit of mm -hmm. potential for inflation yeah. and people start to worry about that a little bit. But there still is no alternative to the stock markets. That's right. When you can go into an S&P 500 fund and the dividend exceeds the 10-year bond, um, there really isn't a choice. And if you can earn that and get appreciation into the future, uh, that's a good alternative. You start to think about you know, raising interest rates and people start to say, well, maybe inflation is going to come into play. And usually the Fed would act to curtail inflation, mm -hmm. but maybe not this time. Yeah, we think this time is different. We think the Fed is really going to do whatever it has to to keep the economy growing, even letting inflation rise a bit uh, beyond normal. Um, in fact, we could see it going as high as 4% before they start raising rates. I think you're right, because you look at things like gas prices and just food at the grocery store, and you can see that they've been up over the last year just That's a right. little bit. But mm -hmm. the, the, the dual mandate of the Fed which is price stability, inflation, mm -hmm. and employment, still has a long ways to go. We have very little inflation in the country, and we still have 10 million people unemployed from the COVID crisis. That's right. So there's a lot that supports the Fed's keeping rates lower for longer, and that's good for investors. Mm -hmm. Our investment committee has really started to build some contingencies, both in the short term and the long term. And I think that's important for investors to hear that today. Well, we were concerned um, of the short-term side of the market versus the long-term. Now, we're pretty convinced that the long-term side of the market looks really good. And so we've actually added some equity positions into that, into the large U.S. denominated investments. But our short-term, we're somewhat concerned with the record, uh, the records that we continue to make. So we've actually pulled some of the short-term money out of the market and been more conservative in that money that clients are spending. And that's really important because when you need to go get that money, we've insulated our clients to make sure that that money is going to be there in the short term while that's taking right. advantage of what we think is in very positive markets for the long term. Yes. You know, I'll tell you, Bill, that's kind of really paid off, the thinking that's been going on here at Aegis Financial, because people are starting to recognize some of the accomplishments of the firm. And congratulations to you and the team this last this mm -hmm. last month. We got quite an impressive award from a national publication. Aegis Financial was named Best in State in Forbes magazine for 2021. Congratulations to you and the team on that. 
We're very proud of that, Mark, and uh, congratulations to all the team members. We worked very hard to get to the place we are today, and we continue to grow and improve the firm going forward.